a quick tutorial about the correct way to set up a photographic enlarger ready to make a test strip or a final print. Okay, what we have here in the college is a Durst M370 photographic enlarger. What else we're going to need for using it is we're going to need our negatives that we're going to work from. We're going to want a baseboard and easel set to 6.5 inches by 4.5 inches. One grain finder. A timer. A piece of blocking out card for when we come to make a test strip. Other things that you may want to use at this point is a contrast filter. We have grade 0 to grade 5. Typically you'd start with using a grade 2 contrast filter. Okay, now let's get ready to start making our setting up our easel ready to use. First thing we're going to do is remove the negative tray and you'll see this one's already set up for use with a 35mm negative. We then next take our negatives, choose the image that we're going to want to use the print from and place this into the negative holder, glossy side up. You can tell it's the glossy side up. A quick tip for doing that is the writing across the top of your film will be able to be read correctly from right to left. If you place it in that way, it's going to be the right way up when you come to make a print. Once it's in, close it down, and then just quickly hold it up to a light source and just align it perfectly just to make sure there are no edges where your negatives have not been shown. And this will avoid any white lines coming through on your prints. So here we are, negatives in, set up. We'll then pop it into place and the negatives are locked in. It's at this point, if you're going to want to put a contrast filter in, you'd remove this little drawer here and you'll take your contrast filter, place it in. A grade 2 is a good place to start. It goes in there and you simply just slide it back in. Okay, when we come to the next phase is to start setting up our image to get it focused and sharp, ready to use. What we're going to use here is the two dials on the side of the enlarger. The one at the back controls the height of the enlarger, so you can use that to think about things like cropping your image down, so you can use a specific part of your negative. And the dial at the front here moves the bellows, which controls how in focus your image is in. What I'm going to do right now is turn the lights off, just so we can see how these are used to affect our image. Here we are, getting dark. At this point we're going to turn our lights on and we're going to use the dials that I've just shown you how to focus it. So we'll use the back one and we'll wind it into a place so we're going to use the amount of the negative we want. That's set the right size I want to use and then we use the forward dial to control how in focus it gets. And I think that for my image this looks roughly in focus. At this point, I'll take my grain finder and we open it up and we place that somewhere on the negative and we're going to want to look through it. Okay, so what we do with the grain finder, you place it on the negative and we turn it and what we're looking for is a sand-like texture to appear. When you see little, when you see little black specks, like I say, almost look like sand, you know, your image is as focused as it can get and it's clear and ready to start using to make a print with. Once you're at this point, it's now, you stop your, cam you stop your lens down to f8 or f11 and you'll notice that the image that you're looking at gets darker. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the lights back on so we can see how to set up ready to make a test strip. When you work in the darkroom for real, once you're at this point, you don't want to turn the lights back on because it will affect everyone's work in the darkroom. It will also affect any photographic paper that you've got out. If you're in the dark and you want to place paper underneath, you'll see a little filter underneath your lens, a, like a red disc of plastic. If you move that in front, that's a safe, that turns your, your negative safe. No light will come onto the paper and damage it. So I'm going to turn the lights on and we'll discuss the last part of setting up to make a test strip. At this point, like I say, we'd still be working in the dark. We're going to start wanting to make a test strip. Everything's and we've already seen our images in focus and it's sized how we want it. So I'll get a piece of photographic paper, lift up the easel, 
place my photograph of paper inside and I'd lock it down. Now, using the timer, we're going to set that to an exposure of five seconds. Five seconds is a good standard time to start when making a test strip. But everyone's negatives they use is a different quality, different exposures. So if you get stuck on that point, it's best to come and speak to one of the tutors and we'll help, we'll advise you on a timing to maybe start this. But for the purposes of what we're doing, we'll say five is a good way to start. Okay, so the negative is set for, it's time, sorry, is set for five seconds. You tap, you put the big orange button and it'll count down from five and it'll expose the whole paper that would be there for five seconds. Once that's done, you take a piece of block out card and you hold that over a section of the, of the paper and you press it again. And that'll expose the rest of the paper for a further, ten, for a further five seconds. And then once that's done, you block it again and it will expose for a further five seconds, which means the rest of the paper exposed will have 15 seconds worth of exposure and the bits that are blocked have only got your five and your 10 seconds of exposure. And then what we'll do is again for one final time, we'll set it up again. And it'll be complete. And at this point, we have ourselves a test strip that's ready to go and be developed in five, 10, 15, and 20 seconds. And this would show us the correct exposure along these timings that we could use to create a final print from. I hope this has been some help for you, and I'll see you again in another tutorial video. Thank you. Thank you.